early in the 21st century because of widespread anxiety about the destruction of the earth, communities all over the planet sense a kind of urgency of undoing of the ways of living and dying. Communities began to form to either live on or travel between damaged lands. They came together to practice living in quite new ways and they developed to be communities of care and concern. They somehow cultivated the arts of living on a damaged planet. Their purpose was to live for the recuperation of the critters of the earth, the human and the non-human. Those communities called communities of the compost and the people of these communities were the composters. Camille Ron was born into a community which had decided that at least three parents were going to be required for every new baby. And having a baby was not something someone could just decide to do. It was rather a collective decision. So the folks who wanted to bear babies or bring babies into the world likewise would have to wait or would never be able to do so, but they could participate in a family raising a baby. The person, no matter the gender, who would bear the baby had a particular reproductive choice to choose, a sambient, not a quitter, who would be in symbiosis with the human baby for the lifetime of it. They tried to create a world of Cthulhuism, while the world before was dominated by the Anthropocene, which is a world that is formed by human existence. It started with the industrialization and ended with the globalization and massive climate change problems and culminated the Capitalocene. The capitalist scene didn't care about the human, it was solely about the capital. The peak of existence was the market and the religion was capitalism. The Cthulhu scene tried to make balance with nature, human and non-humans and said that humanity was not the most important thing in the world, but the world and its biotic and abiotic powers are the main story. By doing that, actually living beings and human beings began to matter. The role of the Zambiot critters was to teach new ways of living and dying. Therefore, only the human babies were to be modified, but never the non-human critters. So the woman who bore Camille one chose for the baby to be Zambiot of a monarch butterfly. Monarch butterflies were critters which shared the same land of living for some time of the year with the community of the compost where Camille One was born in. Camille One modified gens allowed pair to not only grow wings as an adult, but to taste in wind the lewd chimical signals, to have abdominal systems that allowed pair to digest milkweed and to have skin that changed its color as pair grew older. Additional to that, Camille One at puberty could do many things. Camille One could decide to alter her body into male, neutral or female, or many other ways. Camille One could choose to stay with whatever body Pierre was birthed with, or could partially alter it. And some of that could be irreversible and Pierre had to learn to live with the consequences. The community was not afraid with the kind of morphological experimentation and thought that that was something that adolescents ought to have the means to do. Camille Ron was of course not the only symbiote at the time, but the only one of Pear's kind. A strong feeling of loneliness and otherness, downwards the parents were part of the struggling that every person of the first generation of symbiotes had. Camille Ron developed a close relationship with the American Kestrel symbiote Cass. They bonded over the similarities being Zambiots of threatened critters that lived in meadows, fields and in the air. But they also gravitated to each other because they knew that kestrels ate butterflies. To enrich prayer symbiosis between human and butterfly, Camille too wished to get chin implants, 
of butterfly antenna for Pearl's 15th birthday. Camille too also enjoyed the symbolic part of the surgery and wore Pearl's tentacular beard, which allowed Pearl to dive deeper into the ability to taste the world like insects do with pride. Pierre then felt ready to prepare for a series of journeys between the states of Mexico and Michoacán. When Camille too still was young, Camille one taught her all about the migration and overwintering of the monarch butterflies in Mexico. Camille one encouraged Camille too to form bonds with the Masagua and their native communities who were already kin with the monarchs in a very unique way. The Masakwa believed the monarchs to carry the soul of a relative or friend who, for one night, returned to the world of living. Their visit was to celebrate Dia de los Muertos in the first days of November. Camille too was impressed and touched to find the returning butterflies to be symbiotes like herself, composed of living monarchs and human dead. A close friendship between Camille II and the native Mexican communities and activists would influence Pear and Pear's successors for the next 300 years as a result. Camille II took part in their activism to regain rights to the land and resources big companies and colonialism destroyed and had stolen from them. Camille II made it part of Pear's life purpose to unlearn colonial ideas of religion and circularity. Pear came to understand that symbiosis with the living were radically incomplete without acknowledging symbiosis with the dead. By this generation, two-thirds of the residents of the community of the compost around the world were symbiotes engaged in intense work and play for sustaining vulnerable beings across the hardest centuries of planetary crisis and widespread human and other than human suffering. There had been great losses of living beings, rapid climate change and a collapsing ecosystem, which led to an ongoing mass extinction of Capitolocene and Anthropocene. Many Sims left the communities of compost to seek citizenship in other political formations and therefore the compostist practice of living and dying gained more influence all over the damaged world. Old and new ways of Catholicine practices were processed to link to and help communities which were living in the Capitolocene and Anthropocene. With the ongoing support of communities of compost, human births were reduced deliberately below replacement rates so nature and human culture could be equally sustained in the future. Practices of making kin, not babies, had taken hold inside and outside the communities of the compost. Camille Tree spent most of his life educating the general recognition that both humanity and animality had been fundamentally transformed by compostist practices. The recognition was turbulent, exhilarating and dangerous for both Sims and non-Sims. Inventing Earth-wide cosmopolitics between and among Sims and non-Sims was the daunting task of Camille Tree's generation. Camille IV found herself confronted with great mass extinctions of different critters caused by new viral diseases. Although widespread and diverse, monarch butterflies will be among the first to disappear and no one yet knew why. It was not clear if the monarchs would vanish completely, but it was clear that their migrations were doomed. This set an end to the practices of living and dying Camille IV sustained and learned from Pearl's elders. The role of Sims that lost their critters was to become speakers for the dead. Speakers for the dead taught practices of remembering and mourning to develop new strategies of hope on a damaged planet. Breathe deep. Feel the pain that lives deep in us, for we live still. 
and the war wounds and the pain assaulting us, burning. Flush it out, let the pain become sound, a living river on the breath. Raise your voice, cry out, scream, rail, keen and mourn for the dismembering of the world. By Camille Fives' generation, there were millions of vanished species, vanished kinds of critters both human and ordered in human. In this sense, the speakers for the dead had to complement heart and mind for and with those who continued to stay with the trouble and to stay with the wrecked joy of ordinary living and dying up to and beyond the year of 2400. Camille Five reconnected during a year-long stay in Michoacan with Masakwa communities and continued to heal damaged lives and lands there. The Masakwa were worried what the vanishing of the monarchs would do to their relationship with that. They decided that the speaker of that should itself be a new kind of sim, composed of Camille Five's symbiogenetic and the symbiogenetic of their dead. The speaker of that kept continuing the task of bringing new things of earth into mind and heart and taught ways of life to an always evolving home world. <laughs> 